Hi guys, welcome back to the Big Sew Along. I'm Jenny, and today, before we get to our sew along, I just wanted to say a big thank you to everybody because I've noticed in the last couple of weeks that there's been a pretty sizable uptick in the number of views and subscribers to my channel. So thank you all so very much for that. I really do appreciate it. Um, now, for our sew along this week, we are doing um, another Catherine Tilton. I'm pretty sure we did a Catherine before. Um, this one is a Butterick pattern. It's Butterick 6492. Right here. Um, a quick description of this one is... Um, a Mrs. Tunic semi-fitted pullover tunics have shaped side hems... So, sorry, shaped sides and hem. I don't know what that means. Wrong side of fabric may show. Uh, the wrong side of their fabric probably will show is my take on that one. Um, the fabrics they suggest are moderate stretch knits with 35% cross grain stretch. Jersey, interlock, cotton, uh, sorry it says cotton blend, uh, ponte, sweater knits, unsuitable for obvious diagonals. Um, this is listed as an easy pattern and it does have your little stretch gauge on the back. Um, what else was I going to say about this? I made a straight medium in this. I did not make any alterations to this pattern whatsoever. Um, and as usual, I think the sizing was fine. It's probably, I don't know if you can see on her, it, on the model, it's actually a little bit shorter than it is on me. So I could have shortened it to get that effect, but I personally like it longer. Um, so I'm glad I didn't. But if you want it to look exactly like this and you're short, you're going to want to shorten the top. There are two views here, um, A and B. And to the best of my knowledge, <laughs> the only difference between the two is top stitching. Like, I can't, I honestly, I can't figure out if there's something else. I, I don't know what it is. Um, this top, um, although it's a knit top, it has a facing around the collar. Instead of, like a lot of times you'll get um, a bound collar or something like that, you know, like a folded over rib sort of thing. But this one is, a, it does have a facing and it does have, um, it, the facing is interfaced. Which is nice because it does help the neck to hold its shape. Um, however, it does mean that your neck hold does not stretch as much, so... I don't know. I mean, I think this neck hole is fine. It went over my head just fine, but just check in case it's a little bit small before you put your facing in. I had a couple of issues with this, um, with putting this together. One of them has to do with the pockets. Actually, the both of the problems I had were in the same general area, and I'll show you really quickly. In fact, I, I think I have a little uh, photograph I can put up here too. But right here, where the pocket is, and also this area right here, where these four panels meet. So I did have a little bit of an issue getting those together in um, a way that looked nice. All right, so anyways, let's get to this pattern, and uh, let's get to the tutorial, and then we'll come back and talk some more. We're going to start with uh, piece number one, which is the upper front bodice. That looks just like that. And the first thing we're going to do is our um, basing stitches, base around your front neck, curve, and then also um, around this lower curve here. Then we are going to take piece number two, looks like this, and open it up. And we're going to put these right sides together. So. We've done this before, this is our curved edge. We're gonna put this one on top, match up our notches. Now, this is pretty um, stretchy, this jersey fa fabric, so I don't think you're gonna need to put any clips in it, but if you're getting a lot of wrinkling along your curve, just put some snips right in here along the edge of the um, upper piece. Okay, so notice when you have this pinned in here, that the um, lower piece has this little corner that sticks up. So don't worry about that. That is the way it's gonna be. And that does that on both sides. This should be flat against this edge. You have a little flat edge here 
that goes flat against the side. Just like that. All right, so now we're just gonna sew that and then we're gonna trim it down to about a half an inch. You're gonna press that seam down towards the lower portion. And then if you want to do top stitching, you're gonna do that now. The next thing we're gonna do is our pocket. And that is piece number three. We should have four pieces. We're gonna put them right sides together, right side to right side. Match up your notches and your dots. And then you're just gonna sew between those two dots from here to here and back tag it both sides. So it looks like this. And then you're just gonna snip into it like this. Snip into your corners there. And then flip these right sides around out. Then we are going to um, give that a good press. That's the pocket opening, so I think um, I'm gonna understitch mine right here, uh, just to be safe. Then we're gonna sew this, base this whole long edge together around the curve, and then just serge this edge off all the way around. Okay, just to be clear, you guys, this is our pocket piece that's more or less finished. Um, so when you put this, when you fold this to the right side, you're going to baste around the whole edge, but um, and up to this slit. But you're only serging the curved edge right here. Now, if you don't have a serger, it's fine. Just ignore the serge part because you're going to deal with that in a minute. So we have two of these, and now we have two of these. This is piece number four. And we're going to put these right side up, like this. And we're going to match our pocket pieces to these. Now we're putting right side up on our pocket piece, right side up on our uh, bodice piece. So it'll be, it's going to look like this. So what we're going to do now is um, we're going to baste up here, down here, I'm going to baste this. And then I'm going to stitch this down. I've used serging, so I'm just going to stitch right into my serging. If you haven't used serging, go ahead and stitch that. I think they say, yeah, stitch this at your 5 8 inch seam allowance, and then just trim this edge off really carefully so it's about a quarter of an inch. Okay, pockets part two. I took my pockets off, um, and I'm going to restitch them to the correct piece because I had them on reversed. So the thing to note here is that when you put your pocket on, the edge of the pocket with the notch should have two dots on the back of it. This edge here has two dots on the back of it. Ignore, I mean, don't ignore it, but this notch, this this notch on both sides so that isn't really gonna help you. Just be sure that this the pocket opening is on the side piece that has the two dots. All right, now I'm gonna go back and re-sew mine and then we'll get moving. So now we're gonna take this piece, which is piece number five, it's side back, and we're gonna place it right side up. The first thing we're gonna do is uh, put stay stitching from the top to a couple of inches past your notches, so like to here. And then with this right side up, we're going to take our pocket and place it right side down. There's the opening of our pocket. There are two dots. Um, here's a notch right here. And if you match this notch up, then these dots should coordinate with the dots on the back side. And they do. So just be aware that on this, again, we have a situation where, I hope you can see this, the edge of our pocket, the corner of our pocket matches up with the edge of our bodice, our back piece. 
but this part right here is gonna lay over it. So when we fold it to the front, it will be even. But just so you know, keep an eye out for that, that it's not gonna match up on this end. Okay, once we get this pinned on here, we're gonna go ahead and sew this seam and finish that seam however you like. And then we're gonna press that seam towards the back, which is this way. But be careful, because you see I've already pinned it right here, pinned through my pocket. You have the front of your pocket, your pocket opening is right here. So as you're sewing this seam between these two dots, make sure you're not catching the edge of your pocket opening there. My edge of my pocket opening is right there. So just be sure that you're not catching that when you sew it. So then just go ahead and finish that seam and press it towards the back. Um, and you can do your two rows of top stitching if you want, or you can not do them. That's fine too. So here's our side back and our little pocket panel put together. You can see, like, so this is our slit, our opening for our pocket, which is fine. This right here is, um, is a little more difficult to get exact on this spot without catching your pocket. So you can see where I'm off a little bit right there. Um, anyway, just keep an eye on that for your own, um, you know, so when you're doing it, you're aware of, like, this side looks really good. This one, not so much. <laughs> okay, so the next thing we're going to do, it's we're going to lay this out like this again, right side up. And we're going to take our front, and we're going to lay it right side down. And we are going to match these up. I'm going to put a pin right about here at, at about 5 eighths of an inch at the point where our both of our seams overlap. And we're going to open that up and take a look at it in a second and make sure that that is meeting properly. So we want those two seams to meet at 5 eighths of an inch. And you can see they're really off so this needs to come down a little bit I like that yeah that looks better and again we're gonna put our pin at about 5 8 so we can check and see how it looks and that is mm, that's pretty good right there but that's what you want it to look like so those two seam lines match up all right, then we're just going to go ahead and sew the side seam. And again, you can press it towards the back. You can top stitch it if you want, or you can leave it without top stitching, totally up to you. But go ahead and um, sew it, finish it, and press it towards the back. And you're gonna do that same thing on the other side. So here we are so far. I did do my top stitching, let me just say when, when we put the side piece onto the front, I said to press that seam towards the back and you really can't. Um, this pocket stitching here makes it way too thick to be able to press back. It also makes it thick for doing your top stitching. I don't know if you can see this here, but um, I used my cover stitch machine and you can see it's really uh, not very straight right here. Um, so just be aware of that. It's difficult to get um, a straight line on this you have several layers of fabric right here also this part right here where the front panel and the side panel meet you really want this seam to be even mine's pretty even but it's not perfect this side I think is a little bit better but just be aware that that's pretty that that's a little bit tricky too I ended up basing mine together to make sure that it stayed in place so the next thing we're gonna do is put our center back on and that is piece number six and it looks like this and we're just going to flip this around this is our side back seam right side up and this is our center back panel okay so we're gonna stitch this seam we're gonna finish that and then we're gonna this one we are gonna press towards the center back okay then we're going to flip it over and do the other side so that's the front of our center back and this is the other side 
and we're just going to do the exact same thing and then once you get both of those sides done you're going to go ahead and sew the center seam on your sleeves you will see here sleep is piece number nine i am using two different fabrics for my sleeves so just so you're not confused you're just going to put them right sides together match up your notches and go ahead and sew that seam finish it off and press your seam towards the back and then we will go about setting our sleeves in all right so wrong again about that pressing thing <laughs> the center back panel gets pressed outwards towards the side um because otherwise you know this curve here if you try to press it this way it gets all bunched up and you don't want that all right so before we get onto our sleeves we are going to um on the back of each shoulder piece i put a little piece of fusible stay tape but if you don't have fusible stay tape you can just use a piece of uh, fusible interfacing it's fine it only needs to be about a three eighths or a half an inch wide and you want it to be on the seam line there on both sides obviously and then we're just going to sew those shoulder seams shut. We're going to press those. And yes, we're going to press them towards the back. <laughs> For sure, this time, no lie, we're pressing them towards the back. Then, um, once you have that done, go ahead and sew your uh, front and back facings together. Um, I searched the edge on mine, but you don't have to do that. Um, I just usually like the way it looks, although this... One looks a little wonky, but, um, and also you should have, um, interfacing on those, uh, facing pieces. Once we have our shoulder sewn, seams sewn and our facing sewn together, we're just going to sew our facing to the neckline, right sides together. Um, when you've got, once you've got that done, you're going to want to trim that seam and press it towards the facing and then you're definitely going to want to understitch it on this one because you don't want this um, facing to be rolling out towards the front. Um, once you get it pressed to the back, you can hand stitch it down, you can um, top stitch it down. I'm going to use my um, cover stitch machine again because I'm still working on that. Um, once this is folded over to the inside just to stitch all the way around the the outer edge so we can hold it down to the inside and keep it from flopping around. We're going to move on to our sleeves and their the seven sleeve is a little bit different in a knit than it is in the woven that we went through a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to turn our top inside out and this is my right sleeve. So this one should be pink. This is the back. And remember the back is the one with two notches. The front is the one with one notch. Same thing on the sleeve. Back has two notches, front has one notch. So your shirt is inside out, your sleeve is right side out. You're gonna shove your sleeve down into that armhole. And we should have a little dot on our sleeve here, on the wrong side of our sleeve. So right here, that is the center, uh, the shoulders, which should match up with the shoulder seam. So let's start with that. And then move around your sleeve, matching up your notches. And on this, your the, the underarm seam on the bodice is, goes out at an angle, but the top of it should meet up with your the underarm of your sleeve. Right there. Then I think we have another notch on this side. Right here. Now, from the notches down, it should fit in pretty easily without much ease. That's between the armpit and the notches. You shouldn't have a lot of ease. However, between the notches and the top shoulder, you might have a little ease. So, because this is a knit, you don't need to use a gathering or a basing stitch in the sleeve. You really just want to sort of place it in there and you're going to stretch the outer sleeve a little bit just so those edges 
match up. And you'll see when I let go, that there's just gonna be a little bit of ease in there. See how that is right there? That's the ease that you're working in. So just stretch the bodice armhole just enough to accommodate that sleeve. And use as many pins as you need to make sure that it works. Then when you're sewing this, again, I think it's important to sew with the sleeve on top so you can see it going around. That way you can see if you're getting any puckers or anything as you go. Now we'll finish pinning this in. And then you're gonna do the same thing to the other sleeve. You can see how much ease is there. It's fine. It's my fabric on this pink sleeve is not as um, stretchy as the other fabric, so it's a little stiffer, but it'll, it fits nicely. Just be, you know, just be careful so you don't give yourself a big pucker in there. But as you sew now, you can straighten that out and it'll be perfectly fine. You can see all those little holes are going to cover right up. All right. So once you get that done, you're going to finish off that um, armhole edge and you're going to do the same thing to the other sleeve don't forget to finish your neckline then all we have left to do is our hems so I did top stitch my uh, facing down with my um, cover stitch machine more or less successfully now we're going to deal with the hem at the bottom here and it's really pretty simple I'm going to turn this this way so you can see um, at the two front points here and here you have two little flat sections. You can see that I've already pressed my hem up. It's a one inch hem and I did that before I miter my corners. It's just gonna be a lot easier to do it before you do the corners. This is actually pretty easy. We're gonna fold these to the front. You don't really even have to do any measuring or anything. You're just gonna fold those flat to the front and you're gonna sew this down. You're just gonna sew right across this edge with a 5 8 inch seam allowance and then you're going to um, clip that corner and press it open and then flip all of your hems to the back side and stitch them down again I am going to use my cover stitch machine but you can certainly use a straight stitch for this or a twin needle or a small zigzag or whatever you want to do and then the very last thing you have to do is just hem your sleeves okay so because this has this top has two corners on the hem here and here um, and I did have mine with my cover stitch machine and you can see these threads here because I'm going to show you how I manage these corners here you this will work either with a cover stitch machine or it will also work with a um, twin needle if you've hemmed it with a twin needle if you've hemmed it with a straight stitch or a single needle, it won't matter. You can just make a corner. But when you have the two needles, you can't make a turn like that. So this is what I do. And I'm gonna show you on this little piece of black swatch so hopefully you'll be able to see it a little bit better. The first thing I do is I sew one line of stitching one direction. And then I sew the other stitching the other direction and I make sure they cross over. And I also make sure I don't cut off any of my threads. You can see they're sort of sewn under, but that's fine. You just pull them out a little bit. So the first thing we're going to do is I want these two inner rows of st stitching to match. So on this one, I'm just going to pull out a few stitches in this row. until I hit that first row of stitching and I'm going to stop and then the same thing with this inner row of stitching here I'm just going to pull out a few stitches until I get to that corner and try not to break your threads. You're going to need those in a minute. Okay, so now it looks like that. 
And now we're going to do the same thing with this, these two rows. We want them to meet at this corner. This one is actually already there, so we're just going to leave that. This one we're going to pull out a few stitches. Just like that. And then all we're going to do is we're going to take our hand stitching needle. And we're just going to thread these last these little pieces of thread and we're going to feed it to the back now we're just going to tie those two pieces of thread and there's a third one back there that's our back um, side thread that's fine just tie that tie them all together make a couple of knots a lot of people then um, feed these threads under this stitching here. I don't usually do that. I usually just snip it off and it's fine like that. And now we're going to go back here and we're going to do this side. And when you're done, you have a nice, really clean square corner like that. Okay, so yeah, my let's talk about a couple of things. My big issue is that, um, I, and it's not even really an issue. My big, the problem I have is that this is called an easy pattern. And I personally do not think that getting those pockets in and having them look nice, um, and also getting your four your panels to meet up and have those seams line up nicely. Those are not easy. So yeah, I, I mean, I don't think this is really hard, but I do think it takes some focus and it probably takes a little experience sewing with knits is my feeling on that. Um, the things I didn't talk about yet are, let's see, also, if you're going to do top stitching on knits, I mean, anytime you do top stitching, it has to be really, it has to be really precise or it looks bad because top stitching shows. So if you're doing the one with top stitching, also that one's going to be a little more, you know, that's going to be a little more difficult. Okay, so uh, this says for the size medium, you need one and seven eighths yards. I honestly, I don't know <laughs> because I used this fabric, which is, by the way, a um, cotton spandex knit. That is the print is a cotton spandex from MarcyTilton.com that I got like a few few months ago. The solid pink is a um, rayon spandex, sort of a ponte, I guess. It's it's not like one of those really lightweight knits. Um, it's about the same weight as the, the cotton. Anyways, this one came from Haberman Fabrics, and I got that like probably two summers ago. It's been sitting in my stash for a minute. Um, anyways... I don't really know how much fabric I use because I mix them up. I, I was a, I didn't measure them out, but I assume that that's about right. Um, I do like that there are plenty of places to play with your fabrics in this. I like the way my um, blocking came out. I really like the little pocket pieces when they're done. Um, that is a double layer knit pocket, and it's kind of hard to get those... Um, pockets to it's not hard you have to pay attention to get your pockets to lay nice and flat so you don't get any wrinkling I think I have a picture here of a close-up of one of the pockets and you guys can see a little bit of the wrinkling there um, yeah aside from that the pattern went together easily and I really do like it I think it's a really cute top I don't know that I will make it again I don't know that I want to go to all of that trouble because I don't know. I, I shouldn't say that. It's it's not so much trouble, and I think that the end result is really nice. I do really like it. Um, but yeah, just just be aware that there are a couple of tricky spots on this one. 
So next week's sew along is Vogue 1585, which is this Rachel Comey pattern right here. Um, I am going to go ahead and add 9044 from Simplicity, this like shirt sort of pattern, to our queue. So that'll be after whatever is already up there. Um, and I will list both of those um, below and then also on the Facebook page, which I will link below. So if you guys have a chance, go over and check that out for me. Also, I wanted to say, because I was having such a simplicity moment on my last Friday shows over the weekend, Joann's had their um, simplicity patterns on sale for $1.99, and even though I just got a bunch, I was really looking for this one pattern that Jen from Today and Jen's Sewing Room had told me about. I couldn't find it on the simplicity website, so I don't know if I just was looking for the wrong number. I, I have no idea. Anyways, it's this one. It is Vogue. It, sorry, no. <laughs> it's Simplicity 8640. It's an Elaine Heigl pattern. It's super, super cute. So I picked this up at Joann's for a buck ninety-nine, and while I was there, I also got this one, which is Simplicity 8603. Both really good um, patterns for. Well, they're both great for summer since that's where we're headed, but this could also be really good. They could both be good for all year, honestly. Okay, anyways, that's it. That's all I've got for you today, ladies. Thank you so much for stopping by. Again, thank you to everyone who has um, liked, uh, subscribed, and shared my videos. I really appreciate that so much. Um, all right, happy sewing. Have a great week, and I will talk to you on Friday.